Did you know that even the most complicated functions in calculus are actually just a cinch? And I mean that quite literally. Let's take a look. Start with functions. And we know that functions have the domain and range. It's going to be the x and the y. Domain, range. Domain is also called the independent variable. Independent. And this one would be called the dependent variable. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can represent functions. We might use a table or a graph or a formula. All right. And some of the more important things that we should be doing is for example doing the vertical line test this would just test to see if a function is actually a function because when you look at the graph uh, if you do a vertical line you should only get one point one cross over that line so let's say you have a function that was something like this you do a vertical line that's not really a function so a function actually has to have you know maybe something like that you do a vertical line at any point there you've got one point that crosses that line so that's would be the vertical line test vertical line test um, you could also find zeros of the function that's of course when it hits the zero on the y all right um, we might notice that some functions are increasing or decreasing and this would be a continuous increase or a continuous decrease in such a manner as such um, let's see we could also be adding subtracting multiplying or dividing functions in terms of their formulas or putting them together uh, and uh, we could call this a combo or a composite a composite type of thing it's a composite composite uh, that would be written as G O F something like that or X and that would be simply g evaluated with the f of x function in there. So you stick that, and then you got your, 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 your y equals mx plus b, and then for your x, all you're going to do is take the other function and stick that in there for x. Interesting. All right, so that's your composite functions. We could take a look at symmetry. Symmetry. And this would be, you know, say, for example, about the origin symmetrical about the origin that would be odd functions odd functions and this would be f uh, negative x equals negative f of x and then if we have the symmetry about the y-axis um, then that would be even and that would be uh, f negative x turns into f of x and uh, one of the most common uh, even functions that we would see would be the absolute value function. Uh, this is an even function, and it would be represented as uh, you know negative x for when x is less than zero, and x for when x is greater than or equal to zero. And there we go. This is just the basic uh, properties of functions.